Hi everybody, let's build a pick and place machine. I'm Pat Deegan, president of Psychogenic Technologies, a company I co-founded because I think we should use technology to free human beings from drudgery. And yet here I was spending inordinate amounts of life manually assembling prototypes one by one. So now it's time to get serious and let the robots handle the repetition. It's time for a pick and place machine. In this little series, we'll cover selection, why I chose the light placer, uh, preparation, everything you need to get started, set up in constructions, focusing on the bits that I find difficult, uh, testing and usage, hopefully. <laughs> so, are you ready to get started? Let's go. So the first question was what to use. Industrial systems are full of awesome, but they're big, super expensive, and overkill. For prototyping in tiny runs, many seem to have had success with little Chinese machines like those from Charm High Technology. My main issues there are potential lack of support and the closed nature of the system. There's no way I'll be able to fix or enhance these things. Enter Yuha Kuzawa, who's been working on an open source and open hardware machine called the Light Placer. It can apparently handle parts down to 0402 and seems like an exciting adventure that perfectly fits the bill. He sells it in kit form, and I've already placed an order. Okay, so in addition to the actual Light Placer kit, uh, which you probably want to get, uh, you're going to need a few things if you're going to follow along with this uh, little tutorial program how to, whatever. The light placer comes with all the framework and the electronics, but it is missing a couple of things uh, that are pretty essential to getting it working. The first being uh, some sort of base. Here I got this beautiful Linmon from uh, Ikea for a whole $10, and I think it's just the right size. Uh, I hope it's just the right size for what we're going to need. The other thing is uh, you need a bit of material and some toolage. Uh, in terms of tools, you've got, uh, you know, Loctite, some very specific metric wrenches uh, that I did not have and I had to order. Uh, some Torx uh, heads and things like that. Uh, basically stuff that, uh, that maybe you should have, but I didn't. And he, well, I got a new drill, cause you know, why not? Uh, otherwise, uh, in terms of the actual hardware you need, one of the important things here is the PSU. You need a power supply. And this is kind of the recommended one. It's uh, basically a 24 volt, uh, PSU with enough amperage to uh, to deal with with the four motors and all that stuff. So that's cool. Uh, the other essentials are basically wiring. Uh, oh yeah, special torque screw. Uh, it's important that it's thin enough to be able to use with uh, whatever the bearings are or something like that. Uh, so the instructions are all there. Anyways, the wiring, it isn't too clear what you need, but a shielded cable with a gauge of uh, 20 or, or less, which is bigger, uh, is useful. So I got these uh, four conductor cables with shields. Uh, I got 12 feet. I'm hoping it's going to be enough, but we will see. Uh, then all the limit switches, they also need this. I, instead of uh, getting something shielded, I just got three conductor cable to be a little bit cheaper. Um, hopefully that'll be fine. Uh, also, there's some indications that uh, maybe you need some screw terminals or some headers or something like that. I got a few of these Euro style uh, plugs. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, and that's pretty much it for getting started. Of course, I went uh, the extra mile and got myself uh, into a huge project. Basically, uh, I didn't want to have to rewire everything twice, so what we're doing is going to be making a neat little project where we'll be able to easily connect, click, 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 and uh, well, that's something I'll get into detail a little bit later with these boards, uh, but of course with them came a bunch of electronics. I'm using ribbon cables, which is a no-no in terms of noise, but we'll see, and this is basically more support material for these, uh, for these guys. I, I went into uh, overkill mode as usual and got a bunch of stuff and now I can make 50 of them if I want to. Hopefully I did it right. Okay, so with everything in hand, uh, we're pretty much ready to go. So let's do it. Okay, stay tuned for the next step when we'll get into mechanical assembly. There are lots of things to do. Hopefully by the end it'll look something like this. Cool. 